Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Afkam Aziz, uh, here to uh, have the final session before the break. Um, so uh, I'm going to talk about uh, freedom first, unleashing the developer potential with open source. Um, so um, my talk is going to be a bit different uh, from the previous two talks. I'm going to uh, focus on, uh, I'm a developer by heart. Um, uh, so uh, I want to uh, focus on uh, mainly uh, the culture or the, uh, the values of open source and you know, the, the open source uh, way of life, right? So when you say um, open source and uh, free software, like uh, different things might come into mind uh, for different people. Um, so for me, like um, the main thing that I think about, so I've been in uh, uh, the open source uh, movement for about uh, two decades now, uh, freedom. So that's basically like if you, if, if, if you want to, if, if you want me to describe oh, the open source way of life with one word, I would say it's freedom. I know there's a technical difference and conflict between free software and open source and, you know, free as in uh, free beer or freedom, right? Um, so these are some uh, pictures um, you know, that make me think about uh, freedom, right? These are, this is from uh, Sri Lanka. Um, so I like to, you know, go out into the wilderness and, you know, spend my time, uh, you know, contemplating <laughs> about life. Um, yeah. Um, so now uh, let's see how, um, a bit about me. Uh, started off in WSO2 in 2005. Uh, started off developing open source software. Uh, working for the Apache Software Foundation, like mainly like we, that, that's how WSO started. Like, so our roots uh, are in the, were in the Apache uh, Software Foundation. Uh, so like we have a bunch of folks here, uh, very happy to see them after a long time. Uh, so when the company started off, I think it was like just a few of us uh, in a part of a room. Uh, and like we were contributing uh, to Apache Axis 2 and, you know, Axiom, Synapse, and, you know, um, so many open source projects. So that's the foundation on which uh, we uh, built uh, the company. Um, so since then, yeah, I have uh, spearheaded several uh, strategic uh, technology initiatives at WSO2, you know, like um, when the product stack grew, of course, we needed a common base. Then we came up with the carbon framework, uh, and then, like, Kubernetes adoption, is something that we started way back in uh, 2015 when Kubernetes was uh, pretty new. Now it's a core part of uh, our platform, like Core OS, Guardio, um, private clouds, PDPs, everything is uh, built on Kubernetes, so um, part of that initiative as well. Um, so I'm also an elected member of the Apache Software Foundation um, and uh, co-authored uh, a book on Apache Access 2, and we have the main author, Deepal, also in the audience, so happy to see him as well. And yeah, I've been presenting uh, regularly at many open source uh, conferences. Uh, so yeah, I just wanted to share a few pictures. Like, so we had a reunion of the original team. So like, uh, what we did at WSO2 initially was like we were contributing to the Apache Software Foundation where we built the core of uh, the products, right? So we built uh, Access 2, Axiom, and so on. And uh, of course, the, 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 those are actually like libraries, right? Uh, so we need to build products, right? The open source products. The first WSO2 open source product was called Tungsten, WSO2 Tungsten, which evolved into, you know, uh, app server, web services, and app, web services applications, or WASAS, and so on. Um, so that was the original team. So um, we had a hackathon, like continuously, you know, so we had sleepless nights working for so many hours. Uh, and then, like, uh, we created the alpha version of the um, product, uh, which was actually take, uh, presented to a uh, prospect. Um, and yeah, this was yesterday. Uh, the few of us who, um, all of us, you know, like, um, all of these guys, I think everybody's got PhDs now, apart from me. Uh, <laughs> and uh, so we have uh, Deepal and Ajit and you know, a few of uh, the guys uh, in the room today as well. So happy to uh, catch up after two decades. Right? Um, so like, um, what great makes a great developer, right? Um, let's think about that for a bit. Um, 
So like what are characteristics like, so you have like, we have, there was this talk about 10x developers some time back, uh, uh, not anymore. Uh, but uh, what are some of the core characteristics or, you know, um, features of a good developer? Obviously, you have to have problem solving skills, right? So what do we do as developers? That's a bread and butter. So problem solving skills is a core uh, part of, of what you are right, as a developer. And then the ability to create good design and good code, right, so um, good, again, is uh, uh, subjective, so like, uh, uh, it's not clever, I wouldn't say clever design or clever code, um, like, at least when it comes to code, it has to be good code, so I like uh, this uh, quote, so, um, on my Twitter account also I have that quote, programs must be written for people to read and only incidentally for machines to execute, right? So um, rather than clever code, what uh, is preferable is, you know, uh, code that you're actually trying to communicate to somebody else. Somebody else should be able to read your code, give uh, feedback on your code, right? Continue developing that code. Um, so that's a quote that I uh, really like and then like, Premature optimization is the root of all evil, like, uh, uh, so part of the quote from uh, Donald Nath, so I think we've heard all about this, so like, uh, when you try to prematurely optimize stuff, um, you might end up with unnecessary complexity, so if you don't prematurely, op uh, prematurely op optimize, right? Um, so that is another important characteristic. Um, and continuous learning, again, like when we started, uh, WSO2, we started as, you know, WSO2 stands for Web Services Oxygen, right? So we were a web service company at that time. So what we were doing is, you know, we were uh, going through specs, we were participating in these working groups, we were developing the specs, implementing them. Uh, so that was that era. And then, like, we have now moved into, you know, containerization and SaaS and uh, cloud and, you know. Um, so, so, like, the, the, as a developer, you have to continuously learn and continuously evolve, right? That's part and parcel of what we are. And, of course, like, uh, technical proficiency. So you have to, uh, it goes hand in hand uh, with uh, your, uh, the, the continuous learning. Um, so you have to keep your technical proficiency up to date. Um, so you have to, um, you know, keep in touch with like-minded, uh, you know, uh, user groups and in interest groups and so on, and build your competencies. Collaboration and communication, I would say, like, um, this is one of the most important things, right? So as, like, um, in the open source community, we are part of a larger community. So you should be able to uh, collaborate with others, work with others, you know, get feedback, uh, and you know, uh, incorporate that feedback, continuously improve. So collaboration and communication is sort of, I would say, heart of being an open source developer. Uh, so again, like we know, like at WSO2, as well as the Apache Software Foundation, what we have is, you know, we have mailing lists, we have our uh, communication channels, Slack channels, and you know, um, Discord channels, and so on. So, so continuous communication, and open communication is a very important characteristic. And uh, again, passion and motivation. So without um, passion and motivation, um, no, you actually can't uh, get uh, that far. So like uh, the reason people continue to be in open source and contribute to open source, uh, and especially you know, open source software foundation, again, is because of uh, the passion and the motivation. It's, it's, it's much more than, more than a job. And uh, empathy and user focus. So at the end of the day, like uh, if you're, uh, the technology that you build, if it's not going to get used uh, and you're not, you know, it's, it, whatever you build is uh, not really useful for the scenarios in which uh, users want to use it for problem solving, uh, you know, it, it's, it's not, not actually going to achieve uh, the objectives, right? So you should be able to empathize with your users. So your users might have pain points, uh, your users might have feedback, right? Um, so you have to always get that feedback. Again, the open communication channels and you know feedback channels uh, are, have to be utilized here. And you have to always focus uh, on the user, right? Uh, so if we, like, uh, 
look at it from an iceberg perspective, again, um, as a developer, like, uh, we think like, we tend to focus mostly at the, uh, towards the tip of the iceberg, right? So problem solving, technical proficiency, good design and code sort of, um, uh, sort of the main focus of uh, many developers. But then like, the value comes from uh, what's below that, right? So like, again, continuous learning, collaboration, passion and motivation, empathy, right? Uh, so those are sort of the foundations on top of which you build good software. Um, so a bit about uh, the Apache way. Um, so you, like some of you might be uh, familiar about uh, the Apache way. Uh, so there are a, fun, uh, a few fundamental uh, principles. So these are the principles on which uh, we also operate inside WSO2. So I think. Um, Jonathan also mentioned in his uh, talk about uh, committership and so on, so which are uh, core concepts from Apache. Uh, so I will talk about that. So we, uh, that's part of our uh, process as well in WSO2. Um, so community over code um, is a very uh, important aspect. Um, so again, that's what I said. Like it goes hand in hand. You know, like you, if you have written uh, clever code, which is overly complicated, which cannot be understood uh, by others, uh, and it has usability issues, right? So that is uh, not a good uh, way of going about uh, developing open source code. So uh, health and co co sustainability of the community is one of the most uh, you know, important aspects. Uh, and then inclusivity, inclu inclusivity and diversity. Uh, so like um, uh, in practice, like um, how many of you have got involved in open source uh, foundations. Oh. Yeah, so like uh, typically like we collaborate uh, using mailing lists and so on, like we uh, are not even aware of, uh, uh, you know, what kind of background or, you know, age group or, you know, uh, whatever uh, people come from, right? Um, so there was this uh, uh, interesting case where uh, I think, uh, so we, had, we have uh, heated arguments uh, on this, uh, mailing lists and stuff like that. So like again, like um, uh, any design or you know, any solution is a compromise, right? So you have to uh, mash up your ideas and uh, you know, uh, make compromises and you know, um, uh, not, uh, and you have to uh, come up with the, the, the best solution, right? Given the available data. Um, so typically like uh, 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 in uh, the Apache Software Foundation and again in WSO2 as well, your title, um, or your age, or you know, your gender, whatever, it doesn't really matter. What matters is ideas. It's a clash of ideas. It's a, mat it's a mashup of ideas. At the end of the day, what happens is you produce, it produces a good outcome, right? Again, um, we have consensus-based decision-making, right? So we, the, we have the voting process, you know, you would see that, right? The plus one, minus one, zero. Um, uh, so like on releases, like we have to take uh, votes, we on committeeship, right, on all aspects, right, uh, we make consensus-based uh, decisions. Uh, and the most important thing is, again, mentorship and guidance. So when I joined as a junior developer, um, I remember like Dims, uh, Dims was my mentor, the, uh, Davanam Srinivas, some of you might uh, know him. Um, so the thing is like uh, this, as a developer, it really builds you up. Right, so like uh, I can remember, I think I broke the build uh, on one of my like uh, I, ch I sent a change across, and then I think I broke something, and you know uh, I got a earful. Um, again, that helps, right? Uh, so you quickly develop as a developer. This accelerates your growth, right? The mentorship and guidance that you get from the community really helps. Then we have like meritocracy, right? Uh, again. Um, when it comes to ideas uh, or, your, or the, the uh, authority or uh, the say you have in that project actually uh, is driven by meritocracy. So like you might be a very senior person who joins the project, um, but uh, it doesn't mean that now you're going to get full access to the code base, you can commit to the code base, you can drive the decisions. You have to earn that, right? Um, so um, typically like what happens is like uh, we have to send patches. It used to be uh, patches and now it's like with GitHub, it's like pull requests. So it will always be reviewed. 
and then like you will get uh, valuable feedback, and then you grow from that, you improve, um, and then you know that um, earns you the karma, right? So you could be called the karma, and then you know like you will be uh, voted in. Uh, typically, like uh, we have. Uh, committership, so you become a committer, then you become a PMC member, and so on. So um, you go up the hierarchy there, based on your contribution to the project. So if you are how uh, um, uh, actively you are involved in the project, how uh, how much contribution you are making, the the quality of the contributions, and you don't have to um, again to be part of a developer community, you don't have to be a coder, right? So you could be contributing to uh, the documentation, or you could be uh, evangelizing, right? You could uh, be providing, you know, other valuable uh, feedback. You could be an active uh, user who is actually uh, giving real-world feedback. You know, putting the software into real-world use and giving feedback. So that's what builds the community. So like, it's a diverse group of people uh, who uh, it depends on your engagement. You get uh, the uh, like uh, the, the, you get uh, uh, the, the what do you say? You get the uh, you get uh, recognized, right, in the community, right? Um, so again, openness is a uh, cornerstone uh, in the Apache Software Foundation. So like uh, when it comes to uh, decision making, like. Uh, uh, everything like uh, is open, so uh, you, we make uh, decisions in the open, like uh, uh, the design uh, and the uh, architecture, all that stuff is uh, discussed in the open. Um, so uh, even with the WSO2 list, you will have the uh, user channels, you will have the developer channels, so you can uh, join the relevant channel, and you, c you can uh, start participating and contributing. And uh, uh, most importantly, like, uh, what happens is, over time, this helps uh, build your brand, right? Uh, build your personal brand, which is uh, a very uh, important aspect in your career, as well as you know, um, your personal satisfaction. You know, uh, uh, so it gives you visibility. It, it, uh, it, it uh, helps the community recognize you as uh, uh, an expert. It gives you uh, next networking opportunities. Um, it uh, allows you to uh, hone your uh, leadership skills and you know make a global impact. Um, so that's uh, basically uh, so that that's uh, uh, basically what uh, what's the impact you can make as a an open source uh, developer and like uh, the the uh, impact uh, the open source community can uh, have on you. Uh, 